welcome to another episode of Life is Dataful. I'm Dan Peltier, a writer on the global content strategy team here at Publicis Sapien, and I'll be your host. 5G's widespread rollout earlier this year was largely overlooked by many consumers as they faced a barrage of COVID-19 headlines and lockdowns. Carriers had been billing 5G as the fastest network to date with unprecedented speeds, but with many consumers stuck at home with multiple devices demanding high-speed data, many also don't need mobile high-speed data for situations that they normally would need them for, like commuting or traveling. That's why speed alone won't be enough to convince people that 5G is worth the investment. So far, more than 67% of 5G smartphones are in China, making the technology still fairly nascent, and particularly in Western countries. There's also the reality that it will take years for 5G-enabled devices to saturate markets, which Cisco's annual internet report from earlier this year lays out. According to Cisco's report, 46% of mobile devices, that's roughly 6 billion, by 2023 will be 4G-enabled, while only a little more than 10% will be 5G-enabled. 5G speeds will be 13 times faster, that's about 575 megabits per second, than the average mobile connection by 2023. Beyond gamers, though, it's not clear what kind of consumers would be interested in speeds that fast. We often hear about killer apps when new technology is introduced. Think back to when the BlackBerry hit the market in 2002, when suddenly anyone with a BlackBerry had access to email on their cell phone for the first time. Mobile email was BlackBerry's killer app, but what's 5G's? The answer likely lies in major societal and workplace changes currently underway. Distributed work trends were on the rise before the pandemic hit, and several companies like Google and Twitter have given employees the option to permanently work remotely. With many people sharing home Wi-Fi networks and running programs requiring a lot of speed and data, employees are searching for solutions to increase productivity in their home offices. Productivity tools like email, Microsoft Office, or its equivalents, remote meeting platforms such as Zoom, and collaboration tools like Slack and Teams are already cloud-enabled with user experiences on par with heavier desktop-based versions. Companies are used to storing data in the cloud from document solutions such as Box and Dropbox to software-as-a-service solutions like Salesforce. 5G could augment these tools' effectiveness to ensure they're even more reliable and efficient. Even when it's safe to return to offices, many employers and employees are already signaling they want to work, remote work, to stick around. In Publicis Sapiens' latest edition of the Digital Life Index, we found that nearly two-thirds of our respondents want some combination of work from home, work from office, once the pandemic ends. And... 45% want companies to offer an internet or Wi-Fi subsidy, perhaps in part for upgrading to plans with higher speeds. It's clear that either way, employees are looking to their employers to help them with home internet. 5G has some promising use cases to transform the home network experience so that it mirrors that of an office. Several carriers like Verizon and AT&T already offer 5G enterprise business solutions that are helping clients implement 5G at places like corporate headquarters and even at football stadiums to help give fans the best experience. Thinking long term, companies need to see employees' homes as offices that require technology investment to be competitive. And as more people use 5G-enabled devices for personal use, the demand for 5G-enabled workplace technology will likely grow, and companies can deploy teams specifically focused on improving the work-from-home experience and technologies. For all of you watching, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Life is Dataful. For more videos and other great content, be sure to head over to the How channel on the Publicis Sapient website. See you next time.